In an otherwise normal Japanese city, there is a fairly odd museum, perhaps the only one of its kind, and its name roughly translates to the Hall of Curious Rocks. It is the home of an astonishing amount of stones that resemble human faces. It was Shozo Hayama and his unique collection that started it all. He spent 50 years collecting rocks that to him looked like faces. His only requirement was that nature be the only artist. Today, the museum houses around 2000 rocks with all kinds of human faces, including celebrity lookalikes like Elvis Presley. Even Donald Trump found his way in here. People all over the world send the treasures they find to the museum. And there are currently so many rocks on display that some don't even have names, so the owner occasionally invites visitors to name them. But why in the world is it even possible that we see a human face in a rock? Or on a car? In the cooking water? Or in our beer? Drunkenness, for sure, has something to do with it. But it seems that kids like us also see and enjoy faces that really aren't there. What is it all about? The scientific term for this phenomenon is pareidolia, and it is defined as the tendency for incorrect perceptions of a stimulus as a specific, often meaningful object or pattern known to the observer. The word pareidolia derives from the Greek word para, meaning beside or beyond, and the word ideolon, meaning form, shape or image. This puts pareidolia into the category of illusions, which are distorted perceptions of reality, contrary to a hallucination, which is a distortion in the absence of a stimulus. In simpler words, an illusion is seeing things differently than they really are, while a hallucination is seeing things that don't exist at all in the material world. Furthermore, pareidolia can be also considered a subcategory of apophenia. That is the tendency to mistakenly perceive connections and meaning between unrelated things. This term was coined by the German psychiatrist Klaus Konrad in his publication of the beginning stages of schizophrenia and is most likely one of the reasons why pareidolia was at one time considered a symptom of human psychosis but is now seen as a normal human tendency. We are all more or less likely to fall victim to certain illusions and cognitive biases. Want an example? The clustering illusion or the tendency to erroneously consider the inevitable streaks or clusters arising in small samples from random distributions to be non-random and to give them meaning basically seeing a pattern in what is actually a random sequence of numbers or events. A very special type of pattern to us humans is the face with its distinctive features of two eyes, a nose and a mouth. Have you noticed that the greatest part of pareidolia are some kind of faces? Many evolutionary psychologists argue that the phenomenon of pareidolia was often advantageous to our ancestors. Babies, for example, are more likely to be cared for if they experience pareidolia. Astronomer Carl Sagan theorizes that our hyperfacial perceptions stem from an evolutionary need to recognize faces quickly. In his 1995 book, the demon haunted world, he wrote that those infants who a million years ago were unable to recognize a face smiled back less, were less likely to win the hearts of their parents and less likely to prosper. Therefore, it could be argued that the ability to recognize faces enhanced survival ability and has allowed pareidolia to pass on through the generations. That's why a baby will also look towards the face of its teddy bear or even towards the face-like stimulus while the baby is still in the womb. Take a look at these pictures here. It has already been recognized that even newborn babies prefer and have an affinity for face-like stimuli. But now scientists were even able to project a visual light stimulus through the walls of the uterus, showing that the human fetus looks towards three dots that are configured as a face, while not looking towards three dots inverted. This showcases that no postnatal experience is needed 
for such a preference. The inclination the fetuses showed towards even an extreme abstract representation of a face and that while still being in utero strongly suggests that we have a biologically given and genetically determined predisposition to be on the lookout for faces everywhere we go. Moreover, it was a handy tool when it comes to the protection from predators. It was safer for the ancestors we evolved from to assume they see a face somewhere hiding in the bushes, even when there is none, making them, in the end, more likely to flee or fight a real predator and therefore survive for longer and reproduce. Better safe than sorry. Oh, okay. Studies show that neurotic people and people in negative moods are more likely to experience pareidolia. The reason for this seems to be that these people are on a higher alert for danger and often overly anxious regarding the world they are surrounded by, which makes them more likely to spot something, for example a face, that really isn't there. Women also seem to be slightly more prone to seeing faces where there are none. This may be linked to the fact that they often have a better ability to recognize emotions through deciphering facial expressions and the general need to be a little more cautious in our often dangerous world. Okay, great, you might say, faces are just one part of pareidolia. What about seeing bears in the clouds? Or a squirrel? That is, um, yeah. Experts say pareidolia is also a consequence of the brain's information processing systems. The brain is constantly, during every second of your waking existence, sifting through random lines, shapes, surfaces and colors. The brain tries to make sense of the big influx of all those images by assigning meaning to them usually by matching them to something stored in our long-term memory. It seems that we have some kind of auto-completion tool inside of our brains, just like when typing something in the Google search engine. In the field of cognitive psychology, scientists have been able to recognize certain simple rules and shortcuts that often govern our judgment and decision-making, so-called heuristics. One of them is the representativeness heuristics where we assess similarity of objects and organize them based around the category prototype. A prototype is a simplistic version of any given object that serves us as a mental reference when categorizing something new we observe. This object down here could be a very basic prototype for our mental category of trees. And whenever any object is similar in its features, to the prototype, we automatically categorize it into the tree category. That's why most people will see a second elephant in this picture. The distinct features of having a long nose, some eyes and a round head are enough to convince us that this could be an elephant. That's the reason that sometimes things that are slightly ambiguous get matched up with things we can name more easily, which then can result in pareidolia such as these. We sometimes see even specific faces if the distinctive features of it are at the right place. Mr. President. And that brings us to another reason why we see an elephant in those pictures, or Mr. Trump in another. A cognitive bias called availability heuristics is a mental shortcut that relies on immediate examples that come to a given person's mind when evaluating a specific topic, concept, method or decision. The easier something can be recalled, the more likely it is to be seen in pareidolia, where people also tend to weigh their judgment towards more recent or often perceived information. What can be more recent than the living equivalent of an elephant next to the one created by water? Most North Americans will see Donald Trump here, while many people from other continents may have trouble doing so. What about this picture? Most children probably don't see anything of significance here, because they have no availability to such images yet. And this? 
While most adults at first see two lovers in an embrace, most children see some dolphins. Oh? Oh. Or take this seemingly uninteresting picture here. Somebody who smokes may see it immediately, while non-smokers may have to refer to the no smoking sign and therefore raising their mental availability to the given object to realize that they are looking at a huge cigarette at the moment. There is absolutely no reason to believe that any of the images have any meaning whatsoever except the meaning that an active and creative mind may give them. They are not symbols or signs from the spirit world, they are not warnings about the future or indications of the waywardness of our ways, they are simply the result of coincidental patterns that the human mind chooses to interpret in particular ways, predisposed by our genetics, natural tendencies and our experiences so far. On the other hand, this might make pareidolia an extraordinary tool for deciphering a person's inner workings by giving them ambiguous visual stimuli to interpret in their own particular way and then to deduce meaning. Some psychologists rely on pareidolia in psychological examinations. Occasionally, they will use the so-called Rorschach implot test to interpret a person's supposed hidden emotions. The Rorschach test is one form of projective tests, which are personality tests designed to let a person respond to ambiguous stimuli, presumably revealing hidden emotions and internal conflicts projected by the person into the test. The test includes an image that is created by dropping ink on paper and folding the paper in half. The psychologist then ask their patient to interpret the resulting image. In theory, the patient projects their innermost thoughts and unconscious needs spontaneously and without conscious editing into the otherwise random image. However, this method of therapy is widely disputed by psychologists as it has no grounding in facts. And all this very likely explains why people were always so fascinated by pareidolia. The Japanese museum of rocks that look like faces, the use of it in art and architecture. In 2004, a 10-year-old cheese sandwich sold for $28,000 on eBay because it was perceived to have the image of the Virgin Mary burned onto it. Eye bombing is a trend in street art where people try to bring objects to life by putting goggly eyes on it. A subreddit called Pareidolia has half a million users, while the Twitter page Faces in Things has 750,000. You're most probably primed now to see all kinds of things in your environment that you haven't noticed so far, so don't be surprised if you notice a couple more faces on your way back home. If you have made it so far in this video and after learning a lot new and interesting stuff, it would be amazing if you subscribe to the channel or at least leave a like and a comment because it would help others and me out. Peace!